<laughs> I'm so excited to introduce Sarah Arueste right now. And Sarah, um, Barbara mentioned the uh, tent work at tent, but Barb and Barbara and I were actually roommates at tent. It was like by shared. It was so meant to be that we we were roommates. Sarah and uh, but Barbara and I didn't only meet each other at uh, tent, uh, but we met. But we also met Sarah at tent. She was one of our fellow writers at this tent workshop for Jewish children's book writers put on by the Yiddish Books. Center and PJ Library. It was this amazing, amazing workshop. I feel so great, grateful to have attended, uh, to have gotten to be part of it, to get to learn everything from it. But on top of that, I got the, the blessing, and my Hebrew name is Bracha, blessing. I got the blessing of meeting Barbara and Sarah at this event and then getting to work with them on this book. So this book really is a product of that event. And Sarah Aroeste, as I said at the beginning, I'm half Ashkenazic and half Sephardic, and I was so excited to meet Sarah, who's a singer, a songwriter of original Latino music, and she also does traditional Latino music. But she, sh Sarah actually, um, this, she has trained in opera, um, through her opera teacher, discovered a connection to Latino music, because he also uh, knew, was a, a Latino, a, a lover of Ladino music and a fan and got her involved in it. And Sarah then started making her own original Ladino music, and which is amazing. And she makes Ladino children's music, Ladino music for adult and Ladino rock music. And uh, when Sarah shared with me during our interview, the quote that mom, I want to be a Ladino rock star or some quote like that, that became the quote that, that, that started the chapter. And that was got us to give everybody else a great quote to start their uh, chapter. Um, so um, it was just amazing. And Sarah, I, I feel so blessed after having gotten to know Sarah, I've heard her present many places. We've heard her also give lectures on Sephardic cooking. And um, I have to go one second, I have to find one thing because Sarah, I was lucky enough to hear you present at Kfeller with my mom. Um, and we heard you say these words. And I said, I have to say this to Sarah when she presents at the celebration of Jewish creativity. So I'm going to do my best Ladino accent but my but I studied French in school not Spanish so I'll do my best esta persona es una huerta um, this person is a garden and Sarah uh, taught us that that is the best compliment one can give this amazing Ladino compliment and I said I need to start I, I need to, to say this as Sarah's introduction and we're going to be so lucky because right now Sarah is going to perform for us an original piece um, in Ladino thank you Sarah please take it away Thank you, Brianna. So I should say that um, uh, it was back in, I think, 2000, um, over 20 years ago, I approached my, uh, my single mother and I said, Mom, I want to start a Ladino rock band. And you can imagine how she felt about that. But 20 years later, uh, look who's laughing. Um, the song that we started off this session, uh, this beautiful, beautiful session with, and the one I'm about to sing actually comes from my my fifth record, I think, called uh, Together and Juntos, which is a family holiday album. So I picked um, holidays all throughout the Jewish uh, calendar, the Hebrew calendar. And the first one was for uh, Simchat Torah. The one I'm going to do right now is for one of my favorite holidays. And we're so lucky we get to celebrate it every week. Um, this is a song that I wrote because I just love Havdalah so much. And today is Sunday. And and I thought it would be a great way to set the tone for the rest of this week. It's a song I wrote called Buena Semana, which in Ladino means have a good week. And I wrote it actually in three different languages. Um, in Hebrew, I incorporated the Hebrew blessings for Havdalah. I added a little bit of English to, uh, to make it a little bit more accessible for a wider audience. And of course, um, I have a lot of Ladino in it. So um, there is a chorus and I invite you to sing along if you feel so inclined. Alma, which is your, your soul, Alma in Ladino and in Spanish actually, and Nishama, which is Hebrew also for your soul. Alma Nishama is going to repeat over and over. And every time you hear it, I'll cue you, but you are more than welcome to sing along. So I wish for all, all of you still here a buena semana. Here we go. Shama <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Sarah. That was absolutely beautiful. It's just what uh, I, I'm just so happy. We had we knew we had to have that as a, a final uh, presentation. But I do I hate to, to say anything after, but I do want to ask you a couple of questions. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, and I know I know this, but uh, a little bit. But could, did you grow up with what what Ladino did you grow up with? Yeah, uh, hardly any. Um, my uh, grandfather was born in Macedonia, and I have a very typical immigrant story, really probably the same as most of the people here, that uh, my family was escaping war. In their case, it was the Balkan Wars in 1912 and 1913. And when they came to America, uh, they wanted to leave the old country behind. They wanted to assimilate and become American as quickly as possible. So sadly, uh, the Ladino tradition um, was not passed on to my mother's generation. Um, however, that being said, um, I was brought up on a very, very proud sense of my Sephardic heritage. So between uh, the foods and um, the family gatherings, my, my family is enormous. My grandfather was the oldest of nine brothers and sisters. And um, I grew up uh, predominantly with my mother's side of the family. And um, all of our gatherings were so infused with uh, a, a very strong sense of Sephardic identity. And every time I asked my elders to speak to me in Ladino, they'd either forgotten it or it just wasn't of interest to them. So um, I, I demanded as I got older um, to have access to this material. So you were right, Brianna, when you said that um, I trained as an opera singer and um, I found myself at an opera house in Tel Aviv. And my coach there was the great Nico Castell, who was not just a Ladino enthusiast, but he's one of the greatest Ladino singers of all time. And he was one of the most famous coaches at the Metropolitan Opera. So I had um, the honor to work with him at the Met, um, learning the traditional Ladino repertoire, which I had never had the chance to learn growing up. And we put together a series of recitals. And um, at the end of each recital, which were you know opera recitals, um, we put one section of Ladino songs and without fail after every performance, uh, audience members would come up to me and tell me that the Ladino portion was their favorite part. And it took me a couple of years to realize it, but I agreed with them. Um, the opera uh, repertoire, as beautiful as it is, just did not speak to my my soul, my alma, the same way that the Ladino music of, of my heritage did. So it took me a few years to make the switch but I've now been um, composing solely in Ladino for over 20, over 20 years now. Wow. wow, Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here today and for sharing that beautiful song and your beautiful and, and, and my Sephardic, my, my Sephardic self is also so, so happy that there was Ladino at this event and Ladino in this book and this creativity. And thank you, Todaraba. Uh, 